Okay, differentiation from first principles. Nice maths this, but one of those aspects of maths that unless you're asked to do it, you don't. Quite interesting to look at, but for the most part what we do is if we've got f of x, and we know simple rules for differentiation, then for example x squared would become 2x, and we know how to do that. However, if required, we sometimes need to be able to step back and figure out how that actually comes about. And this diagram's gonna have something to do with it, and let me just show you a quick visual idea of what's going on here. Normally, what we've got is we've got a point and a curve, and if we put a tangent on, then we know the gradient, gradient the tangent, and one of the ways to find that is to differentiate from a simple rule. However, if we want to look at how this works, what, what happens is, second point, we slot a second point on the curve, can be any curve this, and then what we do is we join the two points up. And the gradient of that blue line, which actually at the moment is nowhere near the gradient of the tangent line, becomes better and better the closer we slide that point. And pretty much for anywhere on the curve, as long as we slide the point towards, I mean, it doesn't matter what curve we use either, as long as we slide the point towards the original point, closer and closer, what we get is we get what we call a limit. And if we look at this value here, the limit, as we get closer and closer, will eventually give us the answer we want. And um, you'll just notice it went undefined there. The problem with that is, of course, that the diagram, if we've only got one point, we can't join the two. But the maths, rather sneakily, gets us round this. So, principle, second point, slide it along, and we will see what happens to the gradient if we keep our eyes on the gradient of that chord. Good, right, algebra. What we will do is... Here's my diagram, and what I will do first off is I will take a point here, x, and I will go a little bit further along, and I will take a point x plus h, and I will ask myself, what is the gradient of that chord? And then I will slide the point along, and it should tell me the gradient of the tangent. Good, right. Heights. I know this is h, but this height of this triangle, well, if this is x squared, then that is x goes to x squared. And if this is x plus h, then that goes to x plus h squared. And the height must be x plus h squared minus x squared. That's this top line here. So, my gradient. Let me have a look. The vertical distance here, divided by the horizontal distance. In the end, for this, what we can do is we can just throw it in this formula. We don't need the diagram or the fancy moving bits and pieces. We just throw things in. But it's working because we're taking the vertical divided the horizontal. Let's work this through. A bit of algebra follows. Multiply out the bracket. Tidy it up. It's x squared and the minus x squared, so we've got 2xh plus h squared all divided by h. If I divide through by h on these two, dividing this by h to give me 2x, that by h to give me h, and what I've got is I've got this. I've got a nice expression for the gradient, and the final trick is this bit here, where we slide the point so as we slide the point, h tends towards 0, and we'll get the gradient function. h tends towards 0, this becomes 2x. There's our answer. And you might be saying, well, we knew that in the first place. If f of x was x squared, 
then I knew that f dashed of x, the gradient was 2x, which you probably did, but if you're asked to go from first principles, we need gradient, slide the point, final answer. And we use this formula to get it. Let's do another one, just to confirm we know what we're about here. There's my formula, and let me pick a random sort of function. f of x, well, let's try something like 3x squared plus 2x. Now, I could differentiate this, but from first principles, what I have is the gradient. Well, remember the gradient, we know we go start at x, x plus h. We need these values here and here, for which we put them in the function. So x plus h in this function subtracted f of x in that function and then divide by h. That's what we've got to do. x plus h in there becomes 3 lots of x plus h squared plus 2 lots of x plus h. So replacing x with x plus h to give the first one. Minus f of x, that's easy enough. And then divided by h, there we go. So slot your x plus h in, slot your x in, subtract, divide by h, we've got it. Now the algebra to follow. Get rid of brackets, sort out as best you can. I'll do this as quickly as I can. And as quickly as I can, still isn't too particularly quick. I've lost a plus there. It should be a minus 2x, and we divide by h. Let's plant the bracket. And I'm sure you're enjoying this as much as I am at the moment. This is... Um, like oh crikey I've lost lost my will to draw straight lines slightly better and finally 3x squared 3x squared those are gone I've got a plus 2x minus 2x quite often actually um, just bear with the algebra on these these simplify usually nicely and easily and what have we got we've got a 6xh 3h squared a 2h and we're dividing it all by h. And finally, so that's going to give us a gradient of, divide each of these by h, 6x plus 3h plus 2. And the final result, we slide the point as h tends towards 0, slides down here. And then we get the gradient function as h tends to 0, we've still got the 6x we lose that, and we've still got the plus 2. And so there's our gradient function done. And of course you could have done that in about one second right at the start, but if we're asked to do it from first principles, we've got to go first to the formula, then we've got to do the algebra, then we've got to go to zero and get our answer. There we are.